All right, thank you so much. So good morning, everyone. Good morning to the live stream as well. So you are in the correct room and the correct stream of uh, literate package, uh, package development using Pluto is what you want to hear. Um, so I will quickly introduce like a strategy that I try to employ when using packages because I like using Pluto. And I kind of assume for the sake of time that you are like familiar with Pluto um, and that you also like the kind of person like me who just wants to do everything in Pluto as far as possible. So that's like the premise of this talk. The other way you can view this talk is as a very lengthy introduction to the talk that will start in 20 minutes from now um, by Alberto, uh, where I think we will learn about all the technical details behind what we're trying to do here. So uh, just for the sake of an example, let's say you've just came up with a very great new probability distribution that somehow is magically appearing all the time uh, in nature and, and your name is Karl Friedrich Gauss and now you want to uh, investigate this. And of course you want to do this in Pluto because that's your favorite Julia IDE basically. Uh, and why would you want to do this? Well, uh, as I said, I, th I think most of you are aware you can have like nice text and inc include some math and then you can write your, your actual code. So for example, you maybe define uh, some type for your distribution and then some methods on that. So you can like evaluate the probability density function for this or so. Um, and then you're actually want to get into the really nice uh, properties of, of Pluto and you have this reactivity, right? And then maybe you need to use some Pluto UI sliders and say, well, hmm, I wonder what happens when I change the standard deviation. Oh, interesting. Okay, then the PDF at, at zero changes a bit and maybe you also want to see how this behaves in a graph and then you plot something and you, like one of my favorite features of Pluto, you can just reorder the cells and you can say, hmm, how does the graph change? Ah, interesting, okay. Um, so you have all those nice things that you use to investigate your your topic of, of research in Pluto. Um, and maybe you also want to use some external libraries. So let's say you're not only interested in the PDF, but also the commutative distribution function, uh, which you might, <laughs> if you're not caring about efficiency so much, uh, int uh, implement using like an integral and then you want to do this numerically using the quad GK package, just let's say for the sake of an example. So you use this package and then implement some some functionality and then, all right, okay, so the CDF at zero of the standard deviation, uh, standard normal deviation, uh, standard normal distribution is half, so looks okay. And now let's say you realize that this might be very useful, like, okay, so normal distribution, maybe other people also want to work with the normal distribution. So the next best thing that you would do in your Julia workflow is to make this into a package. And um, I think that the maybe the canonical or most obvious way to do is to like start a new file from scratch and then copy out all the relevant code from this notebook into this file, right? So what is relevant? Well, probably this, this definition of this function is relevant. But this here on the bottom, that's not relevant, right? I mean, that's just for your own trying out stuff. Um, and also the, this plotting, like that's only for you to uh, investigate this this distribution, but someone who just wants to call your functions is not interested in any like, plotting stuff. Like maybe they do it on their own, but like not in your plotting. Um, so and then also like this type and this PDF definition, that's, that's relevant for others. So they want to have this. But if you just now take all this and copy it into a new file, um, this has some problems, but because I mean, this, this is like cutting edge research you're doing, right? So it, it changes and you, develop new things and have new ideas. And then you have those new ideas in your notebook, but then maybe they are also useful. You also want to put them in the package and you have to copy all that again to this package and it gets out of sync and you have to be really aware which code is where. So what I propose is that you actually stay inside the Pluto notebook um, and make this Pluto notebook into a package. And the rest of the talk, will I will show you how um, you could go about doing this. So what you start off is um, you go into your Julia REPL, and I've already prepared something here, so it's like a bit of a cooking show. Um, and you create your, your package, just as you would do, like either do like the package generate um, command in the package REPL or use like package templates or whatever you like to do. And then you make sure that you have three dependencies in your, uh, in your package. The first one, is Pluto dev macros. And this is the one that you are going to learn about more in 20 minutes. 
Um, and this is like what does all the technical details behind this. And then you have two other packages that you always have to use, which are interactive utils and markdown, because every Pluto notebook like automatically depends on those two. You just have to make sure that they're uh, that you have them, but they're in the standard library anyway, so it's not really a problem. And then, uh, additionally, you also include all the packages that you use for your code. So here we used Quad GK for this integration, um, so you also include this. And then, for your yeah, the package definition, all you do is like um, you just use this um, those include functions, um, put in your your notebooks. Um, and what are those notebooks? Well, in those notebooks. Um, you have like, this is more or less the notebooks we just saw, but you use the Pluto dev macros to include the packages and you have this fancy syntax where we're going to about learn about more, um, where you have this, this way of including your packages and you can also include stuff from your, uh, your own package. So this is like inside this package and we have another notebook where maybe I define all my types, so maybe you want to split this up into multiple files. Um, and you can uh, have have it like this, and then like the last important thing, because I s before I stop, is um, that all the things that you don't want to have in the package, you can disable them in the file, right? So in Pluto, you always have this disable in file, and this is what I did here. So for all the pl uh, the plotting stuff and the interactivity stuff, I disabled them in the file, so I still have it in my notebook, can use it here, can investigate, but the user of my package won't have to use this, uh, and that's all the magic that you do to have Plu uh, the package development in Pluto. Questions from the audience? Thank you very much. Um, there's this automatic package de dependencies. How's this kind of working together with having it as part of a package? How, what do you mean by like in Pluto? We have these two styles of um, managing the dependencies, mm -hmm. and you, it seems like you haven't switched the style. So I guess the normal Pluto magic, like. Yeah, it's tracking the dependencies is still active, but how does this combine with the yeah. um, package? Yeah, good version? question. So, like, it's it's both actually. So, for example, this Pluto Potly and this Pluto UI that you use for interactivity, those are actually still managed by by Pluto. Like, you have this in this new notebook, you still have this all this Thomas stuff, and so for those. Um, but all the like functional dependencies that like I want to have in my package. They are uh, handled differently using this Pluto dev macros, and like it itself then switches off the Pluto uh, handling like behind the scenes and uses something else. Um, and at the same time, when I when I evaluate this not as a notebook but just as a you know, normal file, then it will just make this into a normal using command, and I don't have to worry about this. So it's both. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've seen other things do this with like Pluto hooks and like mm -hmm. skip as script or like those macros to tell it to skip versus the disable in file. Do you think this approach is better than uh, anything with Pluto hooks? Or? I mean, I found this most straightforward because like I use mm -hmm. as much as possible as is built in in, in Pluto, and then on mm -hmm. only this Pluto dev macros is what I use addition use additionally. Mm -hmm. So I found this quite nice. Okay. Thank you, Andres. Please give them an applause. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>